Now, this is a review I've been looking forward to for a long time, ever since I started reviewing cars here at Product Review. This is the 2021 Hyundai i30N hatchback. It's got a ton of power, it's very exciting to drive, and I've taken the liberty of getting out of the city, finding some fun roads to drive on with some proper speed limits to take full advantage to let you know if you should buy one of these. In this review, I'll walk you around the outside, the inside, and of course, take it for a good drive and see if it comes out on top compared to its competitors like the Toyota GR Yaris and Golf GTI or Golf R. My name's Cameron, this is Product Review Cars, let's get into it. So let's start off with how much this thing actually costs. The new updated 2021 i30N starts off at 44,500 before on roads. And that's the basic car, and that can also come in the automatic or the manual. All these prices are for the manual, the dual clutch costs just a little bit more on top. Now this is the middle of the range premium without the sunroof, it only comes in manual, and it's priced from 47,500 and has a few goodies on the outside and the inside. And then at the top of the range, you have the i30N Premium, which then gets the dual clutch option again. And that starts off at 49,500 before on roads. Compared to even the likes of the Golf GTI, which is another front wheel drive hot hatch that's quite famous in the hot hatch world, that thing starts off at 65 grand now. So for this, even in its top trim, it's still a performance bargain. So I wasn't entirely sold on the last generation's looks for the i30N. It was very subtle and you could easily mistake it time and time again for the i30N line, which looks almost identical to the i30N of yesteryear. Now we have the 2021 version, which has taken a very distinct update to its exterior and I'm loving it. Starting with the front, you've got a much better and more distinct looking grille. I love that. And especially the new headlight cluster with its indicators looks cracking. You're finally getting the much needed aggression up front that the last i30 30N sort of lacked. Now these wheels, these are probably my favorite feature on the outside because they have a cool little fact about them. They're the i30N forged wheels and these all together save 14.5 kilograms to the car's weight. So to take that much weight away is just a nice feature, but they also look really good too. So just don't curb them because I can imagine they cost a little bit to repair. So yeah, these are my favorite feature by far. Second favorite feature would be the upgraded front brakes up from 345 millimeters, now up to 360 millimeters. And I can tell you now, there is a noticeable difference there. Now around back, the two things that stand out is one, the functional boot spoiler with the rain light style brake light up there, which just looks great. And Come on, functionality, that's always awesome in a proper hot hatch. And then the exhaust tips, we have ones that look very similar to the ones that are on the Veloster N, which we don't get here. And it was such a shame because the old i30N's exhaust tips were just very lackluster for the sound they produce. Now, that sound matches how these things look. And here's an exhaust clip so you can hear just how awesome this car still sounds. <laughs> Now what I love about the i30N is that even though it is a very serious hot hatch and a very good performer and sounds amazing and everything in between, you still have a very practical boot. It's got 381 liters back here. There's a 12 volt charger port here so you can inflate, you know, your tires when you go to the track and all that stuff. And you've got a cargo net back here to hold loose items. And beneath that, you have a space saver spare. Just don't do any trick sort of launch control items on that because I'd probably only use that just to get to the tire shop. It is a very skinny tire. And then, yeah, you have seats that fold down in a 60-40 split fashion. It is really usable back here. And I sort of see it as similar to a GT86 Toyota that you can put a set of wheels and tires back here, take it to the track, swap them out, do whatever. Or if you even want to go away on holidays like a normal person would, instead of just doing the track all the time, you can do that in here. And this is a very convincing car for anyone that might be a little bit of a skeptic for performance cars being practical. Now, the two things that aren't so great and they're a little bit tedious if you're hauling big items in and out is this giant boot lip when you first enter into the car. There's a second one, which is then added on top with this cross strut bracing member. It is 
awesome to look at. I definitely have it painted in some bright color because it's a very exotic feature, especially in a hot hatch, but it just makes dragging items in and out just a little bit difficult. Now, the last generation i30N's interior was fine. I thought it was really comfortable and really easy to use for day-to-day -day use that I nearly put pen to paper to buy one because of that exact reason, but it missed some flair. And that's what this and premium version gets you. And I think this is the sweet spot in the pricing range to get a car that doesn't just look good on the outside, but impresses on the interior as well. Now, to me, there's only really three massive features in here that are very different from the normal i30 N-line hatch, and that would be the instrument cluster for the driver, the steering wheel, and the seats. Let me start with these seats. These are the end performance bucket seats and they are cracking. These are a must in my opinion. I know the base is a little bit more attractive with its cheaper price, but these seats are just awesome. They look good. They have blue stitching down the middle like Alcantara grippy type material for your butt to stay still as well as your back. Then you have some leather trim on the outside. They even have a light up end logo which lights up at night or even during the day when you're getting in and out of the car, which just looks awesome. And you can definitely tell it's a leaf out of BMW's M book that Albert Bierman, who used to head up that division, who now has headed up Hyundai's end performance division is definitely taking little leafs out of BMW's playbook to make sure you're building a really cool special sort of sports car rather than something just a little bit mundane. So this is really the interior update that I have been very much looking forward to. Now for the steering wheel. There's a couple of buttons on here that are very different from the normal i30 and that would be these giant two blue buttons here. One says drive mode which is yes as you suspect changes the drive mode between normal sport and eco. And then you have this race flag button and that takes you between end mode, which is like the raciest setup. And it's just like a quick shortcut there, which turns off the front collision warning system and active braking there and puts your electronic stability control into a sport mode, not completely off, but you can do that if you want. Now, what I think is the biggest selling point for this car is its custom mode. Now, apart from some other cars that might have something similar, it's very distinct on how effective this custom mode is. You have a spider web that appears in this infotainment unit and that allows you to adjust the custom mode to how you like. So I love that popping exhaust when I'm driving around but I don't want my passengers to feel ill with a more sporty engine or I don't want my arms to get tired from a heavier steering wheel. So you go into custom mode and you can have your tailored driving experience to yourself at the click of a button which I really appreciate and it's definitely so much better than the normal modes. The only mode that I like the most is normal mode and I'll explain a little bit when I'm out driving. The physical size of the steering wheel is great. Love the end at the bottom and it's just a great size for driving around town and it feels good in the hand. The only thing I've noticed on this car is that there is a little split happening in the leather so I hope that is not a trend with future end cars and that's just a little anomaly there. Now for the driver's display it is all very unique. There is a warm-up engine red line. So that appears as a sort of orangey yellow color when your car is very cold so you don't over rev it and it sort of puts a soft limiter on it and then as it warms up that goes away. Love that. There are also some shift lights which pop up as you go through the rev range and they work really well. Now this touch screen here is really useful. It's in every Hyundai and Kia car that I've tested in the past just recently and it is really easy to use. It's got that Android style layout, you know, Apple CarPlay where seamlessly everything works just fine and as you'd expect but there is an end mode in here which is kind of cool and the end mode just shows you all your performance pages it's like a quick cut so you can go to custom mode without having to press the button on the steering wheel and you can also have it take a deep dive into all your information that your car is giving you. Now, what was most surprising to me is that the i30N retains the practicality of the other hatchbacks in the range. I don't know why that was a surprise, but it just was. These bucket seats, because they're skinnier, means that I can actually a fair amount of knee room back here, although my feet room is very restricted underneath it. For size 11 feet, I feel like I have enough space back here where I go, hey, if I'm having fun back here, at least I have enough space, especially in the headroom department. That is a plenty 
back here. Now the middle seat is a little tight, but there is still a relatively low like floor in the back. So there's not a giant transmission tunnel or exhaust tunnel. So it is really easy to get relatively comfortable with three adults back here. So for long trips, it is actually very comfortable. The small annoyances for me are the lack of rear air vents back here, which I can understand because of sports car reasons. And there's no places to charge for any your passengers in the back. So if that's gonna be the deciding factor for this car, that might prove to be a little bit of an issue for people who frequent sitting in the back seats. Now look, if you need a specific reason to convince someone that this is, yes, a very good car that you can certainly use for your family, there are very easy to access ISO fix points here. So at least carrying around the baby in the 200 kilowatt i30N is easy enough. Let me break down what we have here. So under the bonnet, we have 206 kilowatts and 392 newton meters of torque. Now the way this engine is profiled is that it is meant to deliver over boost with that torque. So it's not like a massive amounts of delay with the turbo, then it comes on and it comes off. Very classic hot hatch. Instead, it's meant to be far more linear. So I'll see how that actually translates to the driving experience. Let's take off. I'm gonna start in, I'm just gonna start in normal mode. So. Normal mode is just the really subdued version of this car. Apart from eco mode, which I'm not even going to bother to test in this review, I can just tell you now that if you are having a bad day with the fuel bill, I don't think anything's going to really save you there. So normal mode gives you plenty of power and response. I'm very happy with how normal mode responds. And it's something that I find myself driving in and using most of the time when I've got passengers. So that's what normal mode is. And it's really easy to flick through these drive modes here on the steering wheel. And then from normal mode, we go into sport. Sport, yeah, this is pretty good. This isn't like a sport mode in another car where it goes full on, but instead what we have is just a nice bit of perkiness from the car without going too overboard. It's just sort of giving you a bit more of a lively experience than you normally would experience in this car. And if I want to dull down the experience, I'll just go into normal mode. I won't choose eco any, at, all, at all. I haven't had a need to use eco, and I don't think you would either. It's just there in case you really, really feel like you've got to save fuel that week. Talking about fuel real quick, I've averaged around 11.9 liters per hundred Ks over about 540 kilometers of driving. And so that average over 540 kilometers of driving has dropped as low as 9.6 liters per hundred Ks. But in short, this is a very thirsty hot hatch. Um, it's probably because of the exhaust, the amount of power this thing delivers. It is definitely not light on the fuel use. Now, what we're gonna talk about is end mode and custom mode specifically. End mode, I'm gonna leave it in this for the rest of the drive. This is what this car is all about. The i30N came out of nowhere when it first launched and it has since been taking the world by storm, that's for sure. Overseas, there's been the Veloster N and that has been winning hearts left and right. But over in Australia, it has been the i30N as the reigning awesome option for a hot hatch with a bit more flair to it. The Golf GTI is just too boring to like really put, draw an exact comparison to this. It, it's just, to be frank, it's comfortable, it's a great daily driver, has a bit more status symbol to it because it's a Volkswagen, it looks, you know, a bit more premium and it does cost a bit more too, but I think the i30N is now at a league where it is very respected and it's just a far more engaging drive at this point. Now, end mode is gonna give us all the goodies in terms of having this car respond on point. The turbocharger is quite interesting because if I drop down to some low RPMs, go up some gears, putting down and stomping now, bit of a lag, but it comes on pretty strong. So that is a nice advantage for the i30N is that it does a really good job of managing its giant turbocharger. Now would be a good time to sort of feel out nor to 100, so here we go. <laughs> This is a cracking car in terms of its absolute performance. What I love is that it's not too much power. 200 kilowatts, yeah, it's a lot of power. Like it's what you want in a hot hatch, but it's not too much for the road. Nor to 100 times around 5.9 seconds for the manual here. And it's a little bit faster for the dual clutch transmission. But 
I'm a little bit apprehensive to get excited for the dual clutch transmission because the manual is just so fun and auto rev matching is just my favorite feature. I only really experienced it on one other car and that was the Porsche GT4 and that is just a lot of fun. It just takes the guesswork of having to rev, you sort of feel a bit more confident downshifting so you're never going to feel like you're over revving the engine because you feel like this car has it sorted and you're never going to feel stressed about a misshift. It's really quite there as a nice bit of you know technological advancement for the 2021 era of the manual and I like it a lot. Sure you can heel and tow and the pedal box is pretty well set up for that but the accelerator is just a little bit further forward and I would like to make it too comfortable. Another thing with the pedal box it's a bit generic for my liking. I wish there was a flat mounted accelerator pedal so I could really make the most of that linear torque delivery but instead we have just a normal accelerator pedal here but that's not the be all and all that's just a preference on my end. Now for steering, steering feels quite nice it is a tiny little bit numb but it's not that bad it's it's not it's not like the G70 that I tested which was a big video game it just still feels very connected to the road and heading through a corner yeah you definitely feel the feedback quite nice and you definitely have a really good idea what's going underneath your tires. Cornering as well, I love that extra bit of stiffening out the pack because you definitely feel like it's cohesive as a car. It doesn't feel like it's flexing in any weird ways. It really is quite nice. And that soundtrack too is just awesome. It's cohesive in how it feels when you're driving around. And now for a mid-range acceleration pull, I'll bring it down a little bit. We're gonna bring down the speed. Here we go, get the nice pops out of the exhaust. And we're higher up in the rev range around 4,000 RPM and... <laughs> it's a lot of smiles and that's what this car brings. I love how fun this car is to drive. It's never tedious either because if you don't want to be in this mode, you can dial it back, you can soften up the suspension, quieten the exhaust. Although the road noise that comes in is quite noticeable. Noise intrusion in this cabin is a little on the high end. There's a lot of road noise that comes in and the audio system isn't all that great to, you know, drown that sound out. So just be mindful that it is a little bit noisy when you're going around on the highway. Now through corners again, we got some nice bits of road. We're sort of pulling through here. Hit red line. Oh yeah. This thing, <laughs> it's so much fun. I love driving the GI Yaris. I thought this had a lot of involvement and it possibly is a little bit more involving than this. But for this to do a lot of things at once, like practicality, comfort, and also dialing it up to make it really fun in end mode, just makes it so versatile. This is very capable, it's quick, it's got everything going for it, and it's just one of those cars that you'll have a lot of fun with. And now as for these brakes, I'm not feeling a lot of fade at all through these corners. It's feeling quite capable, and that's what I was hoping. And Brakes aren't Brembo brakes, they're made by Hyundai. And so that is something that a lot of people were a bit worried about at first, going, was this this cost cutting that we're seeing? But instead, they've just gone in-house like BMW does with their M Performance brakes and gone, well, we can have a good crack at this. And I mean, so we don't have to pay for a brand and that doesn't mean that it costs more for the consumer. So look, I'm happy with these brakes, I really am. If you have to come to an emergency stop, like let's say now, they don't really have that immediacy in their bite, which is a great thing for daily driving, but on track it allows you to sort of modulate a little bit. But as we come through here, for example, sort of lay on the brakes a little bit heavy as we come through a tighter corner. Here we're going to set up right about now at this sign, and let's say braking, and yeah, the slowdown is quite good. But then, yeah, then, mm -hmm. I can't make up my mind whether they're not reactive enough or that's plenty for what I'd hope in a car like this. Now around these sorts of speed limits, fourth gear is plenty tall. First is a little short, 
but it's not that bad. It's just the red line that comes up in this car. Like coming down the rev range, it's sort of stuck between four to 5,000 revs. And then I'm in third right now at around 4,000 RPM. If I go down to second now, I'm way up at six, which doesn't give me a lot of play in terms of wanting to accelerate at the higher end. So the gearing, it's, 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 it's good. It's good gearing, but it could be better. Uh, it's a little hard with a four cylinder turbocharged motor like this, but at the end of the day, it's more than enough and certainly very engaging. The DCT might sort that issue out a little bit better because it's an eight speed and this is a six speed, but uh, I'm loving the manual and getting to change these gears is very nice. The feel of the gear shift is great. It's an awesome experience in the i30N. <laughs> this car really has won me over. I think it has what it takes to beat the GR Yaris in terms of being the best hot hatch of 2021. Now to put that to the test, make sure you are subscribed and turn that notification bell on because I will be taking the GR Yaris to compete it against the dual clutch version of the i30 and to see really if the i30N comes out on top there. But my gut feeling is this has what it takes to win. And that's because the pricing is really sharp. It's a practical car. It has a ton of tech under the bonnet to make sure it is a car that is a really awesome performer, but also can dial it back to be a really decent option as a daily driver. The updated styling gives us the absolute kick in the butt to make sure it is a fantastic looking car that you want to look back on. It turns heads and also, you know, packs a performance punch to go along with it. I wasn't expecting to really like this car as much as I would because when I took the last generation out for a test drive, it sort of felt like it had a little bit more to go. But I really think with this update, with the weight savings and refined tuning to the suspension and upgrades to the engine, and it still has that classic i30N exhaust note. It really is one of the best out there. Now, I'd love VW to give me a Golf GTI to let you know if it's far more comfortable and worth spending more to get a bit more comfort, because that is something that this car sort of lacks for the price. It is very much a race car first, but you know what? I'm not complaining, because if you're going for a hot hatch, this is good. Now, I'm not even gonna say test drive one. I know that this is a car that will fulfill your hot hatch needs. So go out and put your name down for one of these if you're thinking about it, because it definitely is the most involving hot hatch in this price point. So look, the i30N is just as good as it was and it's even better now in 2021. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Cameron. This has been Product Review Cars and I'll see you in the next one.